Oh, hi. Welcome to another episode of The Trading Desk. Happy Friday. My name is Joshua Thanos, and this is the king of the castle, Jason Maine. What's up, Jay? Not much. How are we doing, guys? Happy Friday. Keeping it simple today. Do you expect him to reply? Yeah, all the time. That's what the comments are for. That's what... You're a weird person. That's why so, they text uh, me and not you. Yeah, well... Speaking of which, thank you very much for your support. Yeah, don't text me, please. So, guys, it's been a while. I was working on my tan. In Florida. That's right. It, it's all gone now, though. In the frigid it's cold. seven degrees outside. Right I now. think it's less than that, Jay. So, how you been? I'm good, man. Can't complain. You missed a show last week with uh, three guys for the first time. Uh, Forrester was here. Was it good? Butler. You didn't watch it? Uh, yeah, no, it was a great show. I loved yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, no, I assumed you didn't. One of I the best. It, I thought it went well. Um, for both of those guys, first times on the shows, uh, kudos. It was good. Yeah. David Butler works uh, alongside us, and he's a new a young buck that we're teaching. On his uh, on his way up. Yeah. I think so. he you know sells a watch every once in a while. It was it was good. Uh, he you know a little bit of nerves at first. I think everybody kind of really? does. And then it, you it guys didn't drink. Natural. You didn't get drunk beforehand. No, I thought about bringing a bottle of whiskey on, oh, but we didn't do that. So yeah, we should be drinking right now. I said we should have been drinking whiskey instead of coffee. You didn't uh, spike. No, huh. no, no, no. Yeah, I'm Neither did I. <laughs> so, uh, again, guys, thanks for joining us. Uh, if you haven't noticed, are we going to let them in on it? This is a recorded show. No. So while this plays, Jay will be in the text box. He'll be chatting with you guys. imagine a computer here. But if you right haven't now. noticed, we don't have this. So uh, next week, can we, can we let them know what's happening next week? So next week, all the show will be live on Thursday and in perpetuity after that. Going from Friday to Thursdays at 6 o'clock. Is that right? Yep. Cool. So, uh, yeah, now you can watch it again on Friday if you want. Cool. Just watch it over the weekend. I will. Yeah. Nice. So, why don't we, uh, you want to roll right into wrist shots? Yeah, man, what do you got? I have the ever-famous uh, Pam 510. It's a nice watch. Yeah. It's uh, pretty much the only Panerai you ever need for me. I, I think I did a pretty good uh, job at... Doing my research and really finding what I wanted, and so far this watch has lived up to it. And it's uh, so you got the uh, 44 millimeter Luminor Marina case, um, just you know eight day in house movement, so sub seconds, no date, nothing fancy. Um, this actually the movement gets about nine nine and a half days mm -hmm. normally, so a little bit uh, more over yeah over delivered than promised. But uh, I got it on this accordion strap, which you don't usually see on this watch, but it's pretty comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, give it a little sport for the weekend. So usually, whenever uh, a, a movement is made with like a long power reserve, they they overshoot it because, uh, from my understanding, it's it, how long they can keep it COSC. Yeah. Right? So the the amplitude drops on the watch, and then timekeeping is affected. Though I've Does had the watch. Yeah. So the, I've had the watch uh, run longer than that, mm -hmm. but nine days is about when I recognize like, oh, I need to I need to wind, wind this. It. Sure. So. I would say, uh, you know, it definitely gets eight days, which is good. So do you wind it like once a week? Do you have like a plan as to when to you wind it? I, feel I don't like wear the watch enough. You have scheduled to, like on the, on the no. You have a calendar. I just pick it up, and if it's not right, I wind it. Oh, but I don't you. wear the watch enough. Like I have other watches, I don't wear it enough to notice that every nine days I have to wind the watch. I got other watches here, guys. Yeah, be honest. I mean, listen, I don't have all Panerai. the watches, you know, but three or four watches. Uh, sometimes I forget sudden, that I have this Panerai. I got so many watches. Jeez. Right. You have more watches than I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. I got a lot of watches. Yours? Some are of yours us have, nicer than mine? Uh, have standards. Ah, well, the standards yeah. are for losers, Jason. Okay. Um, no, that's a nice watch. Have you thought about adding another Panerai to collection? Or? I don't know. I think I'm good. You just um, I would done. I would absolutely. The only watch that I would, if I was going to get rid of this and get another Panerai, I like the 911. Um, yeah, I have somebody looking my, for one of those. That's my color. You know, the green yeah, color. Yeah, OD green. But I can't see Camo. paying that kind of money for... For that green dial. It's like a twelve thousand dollar watch right now, isn't it? And yeah, and plus I love the dial color. I don't really necessarily care for the the hands, the rose gold hands against. Oh, they the, have okay special edition. Right. Yeah, I would just prefer these hands on that green dial. Does that watch come with the scroll too? Because usually that's in the past. I think so. Yeah. Oh, it does. Interesting. But I could. Always, I have a green strap for oh, this. Bonacci, right? Close he, enough. He, for... he retired, and that was the last watch. Yeah. Well, now they have a new CEO. Maybe we'll chat about that today too, because yeah. I've been listening to that guy. We need to get him on the show. That'd be I don't cool. know if he's listening. Um. But uh, Jean Marc, yeah, yeah. If he, Good you guy. met him, didn't you? Yeah, I hung out with Jean Marc for two days. Nice in right. uh, well, Palm Springs, California. Ahead of ourselves. And then, guys, I got the best one here, though. The watch that punches way above its weight class. You got the Omega Seamaster SMP. This is the discontinued now discontinued version. 
40.5 millimeters ceramic bezel ceramic dial and i love like a flat ceramic dial like i like this uh rolex used a similar dial for the two-tone submariner right. when it when it first came out the blue two-tone submariner and they change it to like a sunburst i don't know why maybe it's harder to make or maybe it's more expensive or maybe it just you know they felt like they needed to make a change but uh that 2009 that first year uh two-tone submariner with the blue dial blue bezel and ceramic is uh, has a similar dial and i love it it's got so much depth it's fantastic so this watch i find myself wearing this you know this is in terms of my collection it's on a lower end price point you can find this for what less than three thousand dollars per round sure and uh i mean it just it's a great every day uh, some people hate the bracelet i don't i love it uh the new 42 while i do love the watch and you and i've talked about it before it's too big on the bracelet on my wrist so this one fits perfectly and like when i go so now it, i travel between um south florida and, and philly so now all my watches are in Florida, and then I bring like a rotation. I'll bring like three watches up to Philly. Yeah, like a little so, like, roll. So right now, I brought up um, what did I bring. I brought my Breitling, the the Aerospace uh, in titanium. I brought the uh, my Cartier, mm-hmm. um, the Santos, and I brought this Omega. So today's Thursday. I've been here since Monday, um, and I've worn the Omega. This is the third day wearing the Omega, and uh, I've worn the Breitling one day. Uh, I try to wear the the Santos, but unfortunately, I took a link out of it when my wrist was not as I guess it was like on the skinny side, and I left the link in Florida, brought it right. up here. Now the, the watch is a little tight Josh, on my wrist. So. Yeah, I was making fun of him earlier. He's just like discarding links. <laughs> just, well, and, that's a problem, man. I thought it was such a great idea to be able to just take out a link without a tool, but for somebody like me who loses everything, I, I took it out at dinner. Yeah, I put it in my pocket. My wife found it in my pocket. I called her yesterday, and I'm like, please, can you look for this? Because I don't have to order more links. She's like, I found it. I'm like, okay, great. Well, I can't wear the watch, but, but at least the, I still have the link. To go through the research and development to, to do the strap where it comes off, to do the links easy, the pins are captured. Why can't you put a 5-millimeter adjustment in the back of that buckle? Well, this one doesn't have it. This has no adjustment, so I, mean, I just wore it a little bit. that's got big. the diver extension at least. I, I mean, mean that, that sucks too because it's massive. Come on. But Here, let's, get, let's Wait, let's go back to the wrist no, shot real quick. There's no reason in two in 2019 so micro adjustment for yeah. the smp but to be fair they do make a, they do make a buckle for a that. better buckle that i don't which have. i don't know why you haven't there ordered you yet hold on let's see here me treat my, my watch uh, very well bam but uh yeah my you're C right. master is actually in the hands of mike michaels getting overhauled right now oh, i can't right. wait to get that guy back that's gonna be cool um yeah it'll actually be water but resistant it's, which it's be 2019 nice. jason it's the future yeah why hasn't Every single watch uh, company that makes a watch on a bracelet should have some sort of micro adjustment. I agree. Right? The that Cartier would do with two five millimeters on each side of the buckle would be perfect. So like JLC has that style where it's exactly. like hidden and most people don't even know. Right. Uh, Tim one day showed it to me. Hey, you want to see something cool? Yeah. Pop. He pops out the. That would be fantastic. Cartier, if you're listening, and I know you are. Make it happen. As evidenced by that blue dial Santos they dropped right. after That's we recommended right. that. So the green's coming next. I have to assume. Uh, I don't know about green. I need a two-tone rose and steel with a brown dial. Awesome. Do Let's it. make that happen. Yeah. But, so, yeah, this watch is, it's just a great everyday. It has, like, uh, in terms of wearing a watch that everybody knows, not everybody knows Omega, but but it does have brand recognition, you know, right. Bond watch and things like that. So they sponsor, you know, tennis and golf tournaments all over the place. So it's got a little bit of brand recognition. It's uh, It's on the lower end in terms of price point. And it feels, honestly, and maybe I'll get some hate for this, but it feels as good as a Submariner on the wrist. Mm. It does. I'm sorry, bro. Nah. It doesn't feel like it's any cheaper than a Submariner. No. The thing is, it, it fights above its its weight class. Yeah. And you get a lot for a bang for the buck, which we've talked about mm. all the time on here. But, Coaxial movement. But it's not a, it's not on the same as a Sub. I'm Why? sorry. Having owned a Sub it and, cost and constantly deferred to just wearing it because... Like that's my go to. Rolex, bro, and you want people to. No, think it's not cool. even that. It's just it's it's awesome. It it fits right. It's slim on the wrist. The the adjusting clasp is amazing on that's it. That's true. Uh, the bracelet is comfortable. The watch fits every occasion. There's really no need to, to change the watch. I'm telling you, it's it's a great all around watch. It's similar to this. Like I I put this on, and it's it fights above its weight class because the thing for me is like this is a base model. Essentially, it's an eight-day movement. It's not a base model. Doesn't have. It it's not a base model. But, but what I'm saying is, it's it's an entry-level yeah. Panerai. But for what it is, it gives you everything you need. The only That's thing true. I wish I would have is the sandwich dial. Because just to me, that they would have made everything. Well, did, didn't they make one? They did. The 510 came the first two years with the sandwich. Then they switched it. Mm-hmm. 
Now it's. I wonder why they do that. Uh, we haven't found out. Know, you know, maybe costs. if we have the new CEO of Panerai on the show, which we should. But they're getting away from all this. This is your job, no? Yeah. All right. So our producer should make this happen. All right. We're Let's the talent. Set that up. Okay. Add it to the schedule. You do all the heavy lifting. Let's have your people call my. Right. But no. Well, he's so. Well, we'll we can just go right into it. So yeah, we um. He's he's been on some podcasts that I've been listening to, and he's happy to talk to everybody. And I love to talk about Panerai because mm-hmm. I haven't heard him talking to anybody who actually knows anything about Panerai, so that'd be nice. It'd be great to have him on. Uh, I can tell you, he's he's a pretty cool guy. He's got a lot of good stories. Yeah, he's been in the wash space for a while. Cool. Um, you yeah, know, we'll we talk about that. Time. So let's let's keep a little bit of organization. Let's keep oh. that for the next segment. But now we're gonna do a little bit of, and I don't know how this is gonna work without a poll. But let's do some this or that. We're just gonna assume. Based on track record that I win. No, bro, I got a better watch for less money. Okay. So I have to win. All right, guys. So today's this or that. You want to go first? No, you can go first. All right. So it's the uh, Battle of the Blue Dial Chronos. You have one watch from a brand that is not as well known, not as well known uh, for less than retail. And then you have another watch from a brand that is very well known oh, for you're over gonna retail. you're going to start talking crap right out of the gate. I'm going to do my best to all win. Right. So, uh, all right. So you want to do? Go all for right, it. All right, guys. Sorry. Oh, did I, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings there. Sorry. All right. So what we got here is the third gen overseas chrono. You have a, was it 42 millimeter? <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Thanks for your help, buddy. So we have, uh, again, another uh, flat blue dial that I love. You have a 42 millimeter <laughs> case. Put the knife away, Jason. <laughs> yeah, everyone see I'm being threatened. Oh, God. So 42 millimeter case. You have uh, in-house movement, uh, chrono. You also have technology in the bracelet, which is fantastic because that's, you know. Yeah, that's what it is, technology, Jason. Okay. Yeah, I know you're in the woods over here hunting with your buck knife. So you can easily remove the bracelet and lose it like somebody. (laughs) I would certainly do that. Wait, let's get this back on camera. All of a sudden, Josh has a pocket watch. But um, one thing I've said for a long time is that – Vacheron, in terms of level of finishing, not only from the movements, but from the case, their bracelet, there's no better bracelet. It's Nothing is more comfortable and nothing is more finished than, uh, like, the Maltese Cross here for their uh, uh, style that they put all the way through the bracelet. Also, every link is removable, so you can size this exactly how you like it. Uh, no micro-adjustment, unfortunately, but again, you can. it does have half links, which you can uh, you can take out if you have a screwdriver. Um this is the the third gen. The retail on this watch is probably a little too much at thirty thousand dollars or twenty nine four, I believe, something like that. Uh, Pre owned, it goes for less than that. Um, it's been fluctuating. I don't know how to get this back on here. Um, it has been fluctuating. It's been going uh, low twenties to mid twenties, depending on distribution. It seems like depends. Yeah, I mean, a lot so of demand for this watch, though. I think the market is not risk totally set on that watch no, yet, yet. secondary so we'll see where they end up but yeah. i'm i'm so assuming it's it probably going to be somewhere right around 21 22 at the end of the day yeah that's what it should be so roughly seven inch wrist fits nicely so the the bracelet goes right into the case and camfers down so for a seven inch wrist 42 millimeter chrono i mean this thing fits perfectly this is a great everyday watch as well um one thing that you want to keep in keep in mind with a watch like this that actually plays towards the the royal look a little bit is that this bezel is full polish so similar to my cartier this thing if i had this watch i would it would certainly have dings and dents all over the bezel be it would be hard to keep that clean but if you have the money hopefully you have enough money for you know probably a rotation of watches and you wouldn't just wear this every day and bang it up uh like i would but yeah so there you go that's the that for this this and jay so the what are you picking against so the vc is cool it, it has its mercs um I don't know. There's there's things about it that uh, don't really do it for me. So here, what I picked for the this for this or that. Get in on there. There you go. You can see that blue dial. So you have the uh, the two six three two zero ST. So the forty one millimeter chronograph. So this is discontinued. Discontinued piece. The new the new gorgeous. style of this watch is uh, with silver subs. Yeah. Blue yes. dial silver subs. Yeah, so you got the contrasting subs, and then I'm really excited to see the new uh, 38 millimeter. Yeah, those are gonna version be of these, which is going to be fantastic. But this watch wears really well. It's 41 millimeters. Um, I would say at 41, this watch wears better than the 15400 at 41 for some reason. For me, I feel like the chronograph fits the 41 millimeter a little bit better. Like sure. it feels uh, like it's supposed to be that size. Um, 
just fantastic. Here, so let me roll this around. Mega tapestry dial. So now, it's what a I would, different texture on the dial too. I'll concede that the uh, Vacheron has the exhibition case back. What's right? the reason? Because it's got a better movement. It's got a better movement. Um, I will concede that the bracelet is probably better finished on the right. Vacheron as well, mm -hmm. right? But well, this the retail watch on that is watch just, is I think twenty four five. This watch is just much sexier. In my opinion, I mean, I guess. so you're you're basically. Do you want? You see it on the wrist. It, this is like. Do you want the Toyota Supra, the '98 Twin Turbo 2JZ Toyota Supra, or do you want the brand new 2018 uh, Lexus? You know, the LSF. Yeah, I, no, that's definitely not an LSF. That's like an <laughs> RC 350, maybe. Um, I mean, they're both nice. Why don't you just the get eight, both? For the, so here's my thing. For the money, the... they're the same price, more or less, right? This so you can afford well. one, you could afford the other. If but if, well, so, if you put both watches next to each other, hands down, 10 times out of 10, I'm picking that AP. Yeah. Because it just does it for me. I think the Gen 2 Vacheron is a better watch, in my opinion. I sure. like the watch better. Mm -hmm. I like the date placement better. So the aesthetic, uh, because the watch itself is not better. No. Well, the so aesthetic. The, I think fit, for fit. when you start measuring what you get for the money, sure. I like the Gen 2 better. Well, the Gen 2s you're paying in the mid-teens right now, pre-owned. Right. But the watch is just as awesome, in my opinion. Oh, uh, Okay. And I prefer the way it looks aesthetically. Sure. So if I'm going to spend, if it's this or that, and I'm spending this kind of money, I'm going with the AP. Sure. And then I'll just get a Gen 2 later. Yeah. But, um, you know, this is the You're discontinued paying. dial of this, and I think that the new dial is also really pretty, but I like this one better. Sure. So if that makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah, I got you. But the 38s are going to kill everything. Yeah, I can't wait out. to see the 38s. They're going to be, I think they're going to be fantastic. And we talked about it before with the perceived misstep of the 1159 which i think in the end won't be uh yeah, i don't it'll, think it's going to be as big of a, as a, as a hiccup flop as great. people thought i don't think it won't be a flop at all i think the way that the brand's the way that the brand's working and uh and the heat behind the brand and you know after the dust dust settle i think the watch is all right they just need to fix the dials which yeah. should be an easy fix That'll but uh, the 38s are the sh they're amazing they're unbelievable so i can't wait to see them in person though pro we won't be able to get them unless they're pre-owned because we're no i don't everything's in-house now yeah um i think you really can't go wrong with either of these i think from a value for dollar standpoint uh for a little bit less money you get a lot more with the vacheron but the vacheron's more of like a watch guys watch where the ap is everybody with the name recognition mm -hmm. like everybody can appreciate that ap where if you're wearing the vacheron that's a watch guys watch does that makes would you agree with that yeah i think it makes sense um but then it comes down if you're if you want to take it in as what does market dictate when you call somebody to sell the watch they're gonna be much more happy that you give them a call and you have this watch than yeah, that watch that's true um you, you get it's it'll be easier so to sell the vacheron is a great watch to buy just buy the one you want and buy it at the right price you i don't think it. anybody's hunting for gen 3 at the right price right now blue dials yeah the, the, the market is the market is still somewhat unstable on a piece Blue dial Gen 2s, people want, you know, and they're looking for. Whereas I think this watch has already established its place. Having been discontinued, people want this watch. I guess. I don't know. I, I'd say that the, the well, market this brings, is... This brings over retail. Right now it does. Okay. So oh, yeah. the market is spoken. This brings watch... Not brings spoken. Over, I mean, some watches over go... Over retail. Some Panerai's go over retail most, and then die. So okay. like, that doesn't mean anything. But right now, the market being what it is on Same the today. two watches... This is over retail and that's not. So I'm just... I got I'm you, but most to watches point, are under retail. Right. But on the segue of this conversation, I'm speaking directly to the market part point of this. Yeah. And for today, for the market, this is yeah, a that's a stronger watch. piece for sure. And there's yeah, obviously that. Yeah, so you're that, telling me your money, two grand difference, you take the Vacheron? I mean, it's hard. I'd say that as part of a larger collection, if I already had an AP, because if I was building a collection, I'd buy an AP before a Vacheron. Hundred percent. Not everybody feels the same way, but that's what I would do. Um, but. If all things are equal, right? So I'm not chasing anything. I just want to add to a larger collection, and I have the option to buy, you know, one of these or other. First of all, I have more negotiating power when I'm buying the uh, the Vacheron. I get a rubber and a leather strap all in the same watch. So, mm -hmm. like we talk about with Panerai, it's basically getting three watches, right? Because there's there's a there's a big difference between wearing this watch on a bracelet, wearing it on a, a leather strap and a rubber strap. So sure. you you get all those options. Um, you, get you get better the, movement. You get the deploying buckle for the second That's two right. straps. Exactly. You get a, a deployant, which is fantastic as well. It's a beautiful deployant. So if I'm not buying into the hype of AP, because a lot of the the value for that watch is hype. Yeah. Just like how a lot, like with Rolex right now too, Patek. I agree. So a lot of that is with hype. So if I'm not buying into the hype, then I'd say take the Vacheron. But 
there's nothing wrong with hype. Right? There's there's not. It, you have to understand what you're buying, which yeah. is what we're saying. So if I'm that's, just looking at value that's all the bells and whistles. Yep. So more bang for the buck. Yeah. Value for dollars. More fire for the buck. Yeah. And also, if I'm buying it and I'm really concerned with resale value, that's a better bet than the Vacheron because who knows what happens with the brand. Whereas AP is on the upswing, and uh, you know, and Vacheron's kind of. And then one of the things I could see bit. too is like curating a collection. The blue dial brings such a premium for these mm-hmm. that I would be just as happy with the white dial with the black sub dials, yeah. and that in a Gen Two blue dial. Sure. So that way I could have both watches. Yeah. Um, but I wore Two that. Good I wore that white dial with the black subs for like a weekend uh, a couple months ago. Yeah. I couldn't stop staring at the watch. Nice. It was gorgeous. Yeah. So that's a reverse panda, right? Yeah. Either way. Or I no, think white white with black is panda. Black with white right. is reverse panda. Either way, I think they're both solid choices. I just the the Gen two would be my choice for the VC, even though sure. the Gen three uh, technically is a better watch because right. of the movement upgrades that's and all good that. Way to put it technically, because um, literally, yeah, the technical but, aspects of this watch are better. This dial is fantastic too. So if we compare the dials, too, I actually like. I mean, to the me, the I think this dial is yeah, that dial is good, but it, the uh, the mega capacity, yeah, the sheen to the to the VC dial and how uh, is kind of what you're talking about with the Omega that you didn't like or the sub in the. No, the newer the generations. The new one has a, sun, a sunburst. This would right. be like the original, like the, the 2009 sub. This is the dial that I like. It's yeah, beautiful. I don't know. That dial's a little... And you see like the um, uh, the second track on the outside is raised too. There's, there's. I feel like there's as much, if not more, detail put into is, this watch. The bracelet is really is where the money in this piece is. I just, I know if I scratch the inside of that high polish, like, it's going to drive me crazy. I guess. But it is cool. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Uh, are we gonna have a poll during the live show? We're not. So you guys can just send us text messages or emails on which one do you guys pick. I assume I win. You would, but that's right. We all know what's gonna happen. I win most times, just really in life. Did you guys general, see this so. knife that's on the table? Check this out. It's super cool. What about my gun? Oh. I, I just got this yesterday. What is that? What is that made out of? This is a David the bones Bozier. of your enemy. No, that's uh. Caramel micarta. That's about uh, eighty-five years old. That micarta. What's micarta? Micarta is uh, compre- like a compressed, uh, essentially paper product, um, like rag micarta. So back in like the seventies and eighties, they used to use this stuff to like make counter kitchen countertops and stuff like that. So For mica. Artificial. No, it's called micarta, but it's similar in, in capacity, I guess. It's junk. But uh, super cool, David Mosier. Looks cool. Look what do you use that for? Um. Pretty much everything. I mean, food, uh, cutting boxes open, cutting stuff off stuff, playing with it. Threatening, threatening, threatening people. Threatening your coworkers? Like, you know, you okay. never know when you're going to... You uh, you carry a knife every once in a while now? No, I don't carry. You have one at your desk? Why do you keep flinching? Because I don't feel threatened, Jason. Okay. I have to well, call HR. Your hair's getting a little long. We can, uh, I got to get a haircut. Yeah. Keep it to yourself. But all right, so this or that, uh, Vacheron or AP, um, I'd say it's a hard choice. I say it's an easy choice. As we just surmised, the AP is far superior I for every agree. reason. So, and I win. You guys, there you go. You guys can ch- can choose. Um, why don't you take that off your wrist? That thing's for sale, Jay. Uh, all I know is that your watch is on the table and you keep looking over at my watch, which means you want this one and no, not I'm that f- one. It's not. You've already pushed that away from it. You disassociating yourself with the watch, and uh, clearly I stick behind my choice because uh, mine's staying close. Mm-hmm. Well, you'll be charged for the refinishing job on that watch. Yeah, I'll just buy it, and <laughs> it's mine. Well, good luck. Right. What do you give me for this? Just trade uh, it in. What's sandwich. that worth? Fifteen hundred bucks? Yeah. Fair enough. Here, I'll wear your watch. But um, so speaking of Panerai, uh, like I was saying before, Panerai's doing some exciting things. We talked about it in our last show, um, a little bit. And uh, I think, I think that I'm kind of, I'm optimistic for the for the future of Panerai. Um, I think that. So tell me your experience with the with the new CEO. So when uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Pontru or something like yeah, that. Yeah, we did the event in Jean Marc. Jean Marc. Yeah, we did the event in Palm Springs um, for Roger Dubois, and it was a Lamborghini uh, associated racing event. Okay. So went out to Palm Springs for, I think I was there for four days. Two days were on the track at Thermal Raceway, which is a privately owned uh, legitimate racetrack. Sure. Um, and then they have Lamborg- Team Lamborghini out there, which are uh, professional GT drivers. 
Right. So there was, I think, 30 people which were uh, watch industry and clients that had purchased the watches. Right. Because part of the thing was when you bought the watch, you got to come out, which is... So was this... This is like one of the Lamborghini watches. Like they have, they're, they brand right. with Lamborghini, yeah, right? Exactly. This was, uh, was Roger like, Dubuis. Yeah, exactly. It was a co-brand between uh, Lamborghini and Pirelli because uh, Lamborghini signed using Pirelli tires, and sure. they were doing both companies. So, um, you know, you bought the watch, you got to go have one of these events. Similarly, sure. if you buy the car, you get to go to one of these events. And you get a watch. No, some of the watches but, are more expensive than the car. So some of the guys that were there had bought the watch, didn't mm -hmm. know anything about the car. Some of the guys bought the car, didn't know anything about the watch. So yeah. it was a good event to kind of bridge the gap for everybody. Sure. And then some of the guys were just watch industry guys like myself who were mm -hmm. there and you know knew the watch, They're knew the car, yeah. but weren't weren't there for either one. So you're a car um, guy, obviously. We you alluded yeah. to it uh, earlier in the show with your yeah. Supra call out. So it was uh, I had only ever driven a Lamborghini once before this. And it was like... Uh, valet in college? Uh, no, it wasn't a valet, but it was uh, an old customer of mine who used to go through cars and bring stuff in, and I'd get to take a look at them. But it was, you know, drive it around the parking garage or take it down, you know, uh, A1A for, you know, five minutes and turn around. It was not full out around a racetrack, you know, uh, unsupervised. Mm -hmm. So this was crazy. And uh, there were four separate events. It was crazy. You know, every day was lunch and dinner with these people and stories and... It was really cool to it's see. Palm Springs, and, right? Yeah. yeah, Palm Springs Thermal Racetrack. And it was it's a bonding activity, which is where you're seeing Jean-Marc come in and, and make these events about more than what we're selling, right? Which is, which is luxury. That's more what, than the product. Right, saying, exactly. Yeah. So that's what luxury goods are supposed to do. They're supposed to evoke some emotion, some tie you to a certain event. Yeah. Um, so when we talk about what's happening with Panerai, and bringing that similar kind of, um, you know, feeling and, and feel to the company. I well, think I that that's... Well, right there. I'm kind of interested in hearing the rest of the story about about your, your driving experience because I only heard, like, a few things. I saw some pictures. So so you're there for, what, how long? Five days? Four days? I was there for four days. Two days were thermal. The other two days were around Palm Springs and different events. They actually took us uh, into, like, uh, Indian Canyon, the first night, we, they had some picnic tables. It was like an event. Okay. And we got into some, like, uh, some old Jeeps and went up and down the, the canyons, which oh, was yeah? pretty cool. Wow. And that was that was pretty nice. And how many people cold were there? up there, though. Uh, there was, like, 30, like 30 participants. Okay. Plus, you know, the, the event staff and stuff sure. like that. So, so, but you got to race. Yeah. Uh, so the, I remember. Yeah, the two... Um, there was, I, I think it was like 30 people total driving the cars. Sure. And then, so you got teams of four or five, and then each team was uh, assigned an actual GT driver, someone mm -hmm. that drives in a GT class car oh, wow. for Lamborghini. So a professional race driver. Right. Mine was, uh, I, I don't remember her name. She was the only girl of the of the team. Woman. Tiny. We refer to them as women. Well, Jason. she was five foot two, 100 pounds. Yeah. And kick your ass. Too. Yeah. No, she was badass. I mean, when I tell you she was the fastest one on the track, mm -hmm. and it's not just weight differential. I mean, she was handling that car. Was that right? Yeah, it was pretty impressive. Um, Interesting. I think she was from like in Montana too, which was weird, but weird I think to me. There's four people from Montana. So yeah. She's one of them, yeah. Well, uh, she's not in the cold now. Mm -hmm. She's in Palm Springs apparently. Um, but it was pretty awesome. So there was different circuits, and you did different things with different cars. Sure. And then uh, the end was. Uh, one full time around the, the entire track, not not broken up in circuits, but sure. all together in one track, full out as fast as you can go, you know, by yourself. What kind of track is it? It's, it's not just a circle? No, it's a full GT track. So what is that? That's like how many yeah. turns? All turns, banks, different oh, shift in, shift out, different key points. Oh there's God, a drift in there. There's a slalom in there. Yeah. There's, yeah. So um, I actually ended up doing really well. Um, I got second fastest of everybody that was there. Mm -hmm for the event, which was pretty awesome, um, considering the guy that won first owns a Lamborghini and a driving school. Oh, wow. And the guy that got second uh, just bought a Lamborghini and had previously put the one that he replaced it with into a wall at a track event. So You don't own a Lamborghini. I don't own a Lamborghini. Um, Jeez, maybe I should. I don't know, but it was fun. It was a good time. Max out your credit there. No, actually, everything was taken care of, so it was it was good. I almost uh, started looking for used Lamborghinis, but 
You're for what it costs to do brakes and uh, an oil change, I could just buy something else. So. Right. You pick up a second job for that. Yeah. But it was a fun event. And I got to tell you, like, I didn't I didn't even buy the watch. Mm-hmm. Right. So well, now I have that are, experience. Right. Without having, you know, without having anything vested. Imagine, like, what's happening now, getting back to. to well, so that's one thing. So those watches cost over $200,000. Right? I think right. the, it's like 210 I was looking yeah, at somebody you're talking about one. Uh, full, tur- you know, double axis tourbillons, right. spidey light carbon fiber cases, sure. which, you know, these crazy watches that you mm-hmm. see on the cover of, like, Watch Magazine, you sure. know. So, so now Panerai, so uh, we'll refer to him as JMP because those are his initials. So mm-hmm. The new CEO of uh of panerai is bringing that to the brand and so they have so they've had mike horn like the pole to pole mike horn yeah. editions in the past where you just spend money for the watch and now you own it and then they end up all over chrono 24 and right. traded right and they, they were in like you know 500 pieces or however many 300 yeah. pieces or whatever so now for example the new mike horn uh edition so i think this is the third one they made um third or fourth so it's uh, what was it? it was a thirty nine thousand dollar watch. Was that that one? There was there was so say it's thirty thousand dollars. Right. It's too much for the watch itself, but as part of purchasing that watch, you get an expedition with Mike Horn himself. Right. So this is like a, a priceless experience. So I think he's actually doing better than he did with Lamborghini because I've done a, a, an event like at a in the parking lot of uh, Dolphin Stadium in, in Miami where I got to drive a Lamborghini. Obviously, not exactly what you got, right. but I'm getting some percentage of that, and it cost me I don't know 160 bucks. So like now you're getting literally a priceless experience for like okay. So when you see the watch, say it's 30 uh, 30 some odd thousand dollars. That's way too much for the watch. But when you couple it with a like a once in a lifetime experience where you get the, the watch right. delivered there, it's actually not bad. It, it creates some value. Absolutely, because at the end of the day, like I said, if I bought the watch or mm-hmm. I bought the car, I get to go to one of those events. You can't call Mike Horn and say, "Hey, I want to come with you." Right. Like, so you're you're literally. Maybe you can't. I don't know. I mean, maybe he sells tickets. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I assume he sold those tickets to Panerai. Right? right. But um, it it really is a cool experience, and especially when you're talking about that's the spirit of the watch. It's not right. like a false partnership. Sure. So wearing the watch on the trip. Right. And then. You know, I'm sure he's wearing one while you're there, and mm-hmm. you guys are sharing that experience together. Like, it adds a tremendous amount of value. It's similar to how you would how you would buy a watch for charity, because like, right? Because it's a good cause. Like, you're buying, you're essentially buying a vacation and getting a cool watch at right. the same time. So, no, it's. I think it's a great idea, and I think that. So, as we see retail change, um, we see like a lot of the brands are going vertical. They're mm-hmm. cutting out their dealer network because they're saying, hey, with the internet. We don't need all these guys to go out and sell our watches. Some brands are still happy with the, with that. You know, you Type see the distribution paddocks, model, and, yeah. right, paddocks and Rolex. But uh, a lot of these brands are going vertical. But a, like a, like a company like Richemont that makes so many watches, I don't know if it's possible for them to go vertical. We'll see. So, but finding these ways to get people excited about their brand, it's fantastic marketing that the customer is paying for as opposed to the company paying for, right? And it, I think it, it's a uh, it's a very in- inventive way to create a real connection between, you know, a, a hunk of metal or say like mechanical art, like what I like to refer to watches right. as. So mechanical art, so it's a frivolous purchase or whatever, however you want to look at it, right? So it's, you know, tertiary income spent on sure. something that's not needed, but it's a great way to-, to Luxury it, item. Yeah, luxury item, yeah. exactly. So it's a great way to create a real connection between these two. So I, I think it's- it's very interesting. I hope to see that with a lot of different brands too. And I think it speaks to so that's the next level of what you have to do to bring that type of experience. So that so years ago, uh, these brands went to like boutiques. Sure. Right. Nobody really knew if that was going to work. It was it was a risky move. They kind of didn't. Mm-hmm. Right. A lot of them either went out or they lose money every month. Or, right. Right. So you have these brands that have these boutiques. Now, what's the next step? Because that didn't work. What's the next step? Well, the only way that those stores stay Mm -hmm. is if you cut everybody else out and you make that the place you have to go right which i think makes sense for the vertical model Mm because now you have these stores that mean something again and then once we don't know if that will work but the next step to that is creating even an even more luxury experience with Mm -hmm. these type of events which you know those shops do anyways like omega will have you know a night where they invite everybody for champagne and watches Unfortunately, a lot of times they get very pushy because if you come to that event, you're expected to, you know, to slide your credit card, yeah. but which is a little weird. But um, 
Well, you I know. think that it should be the other way around. Like, so you get to have this experience because you buy the watch. I think that like a company like Hublot could be throwing these massive parties where you, in order to to, to gain entry, you gotta yeah. you have to own their watch. Uh, Omega can do. I mean, they have so many different partnerships. They can do James Bond uh, uh, themed uh, uh, events. They can do. Uh, racing, yeah. they can do space. So, like uh, every brand, if they're, I feel like if they're going to survive, they need to make their watches a little bit more experiential, as opposed to just here's something that you know you can wear on your wrist and feel proud about, or you know, yeah. whatever. It so, may be. so Omega sells more Speedmasters and Seamasters than they know what to do with. So, right. I don't know that they really need to do True. an event, but I mean, there's certainly you could do it like a local poker night, you know, martinis and and poker, right? Casino Royale night yeah, yeah. at the store, you know, or something that'd be cool. Um, but for watches of you know this kind of or the the Panerai's, we're spending thirty grand plus. These events are, are pretty cool, so yeah. I'm excited to see what That's the next step for something like that is. Right, and and they're not they're relatively inexpensive, uh, and and the brand, especially if they're selling through the boutiques. Yeah, there's enough margin for this to work. So it's like, hey, if you come in and buy, so for like you said. Omega sells as many Speedmasters and, and Seamasters as, as as they can, but a lot of those are not sold through the boutiques. A lot of those are sold through the dealer network. Sure. So if they sell through a boutique, they keep all that margin. So, so you make an incentive as opposed to here's a glass of champagne. Right. Hey, how about if you bought the watch at the boutique, then now you get a free pass. Like now you get your part go to, of the club. Go to Space Camp for the day or something like oh, that. Right. Or whatever. Something like that. Um, I think it's a good way to market. A thought that just kind of appealed to, uh, to me also is – that the the Mike Horn thing and like these events mm -hmm. are kind of like a small opening window to what big time spending guys have been doing for years, mm -hmm. and that's like if you buy enough paddocks, you get to go to Switzerland, right. see the factory. Mm -hmm. If you buy enough of this, you get you know you get to go to Basel with one of the companies or something. Right. That used to only really be for like big hitter guys. Now so, you yeah, can, million you know, dollar customers, and then you know thirty grand is a lot of money for a watch. Oh yeah. So it's not that it's you know Especially not a big purchase. Yeah, but it's not that it's not a big purchase. But that was never you never got a special experience like that for right. a $30,000 watch mm -hmm. before. So I think that's where the genius behind this is. And uh, I think it'll do really well. I, I'm pretty sure those watches are going to sell out right away if they're well, not already such, sold such out. Well, limited. So, like, so there's, there's like the, 30 of them or something, Well, right? they have the Luna Rossi. They have the one for the, um, the Italian military. Which that they made awesome. They made 33 I, – I, 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 my memory's so bad. They made 33 of them, and it had to do with – the metal with the thirty three yeah. medals, so you get to go to like a, it was like Marine Camp or, or it's a, yeah the Italian Special Forces camp, or, and you get to like do training drills and stuff right. with them. But the number thirty three was so meaningful right. too, which yeah. I thought was amazing, uh, because I just heard oh thirty three whatever. But so they're making them. So the uh, is it the Mike Horns nineteen that uh, the yeah, green right. uh, that that one is the new Carbotech with the green, which is the the Italian uh, uh, Italian Marines, I guess. I think Special Forces. Special, Special Forces. Yeah. So that one's 33. And then the Luna Rossi, which is, you know, the, the boat racing, yeah. they said that one, they're going to they're gonna continue to make those until the end of the racing season, I think is what I read. So, but they're, they're limited enough uh, yeah. to, to not be, you know, bastardized. The titanium, the bezel on the mic horn is pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. It's I like, like think the, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> which is, should be the Luna Rossi. Not the yeah. it's the yacht master. Yeah, but, that's right. It makes sense. But anyways, whatever. But it's it's interesting, and and I'm I'm happy that that the brand's doing that. And I like to see more brands doing that and, and bringing more value uh, than other than just making watches that they think look cool. Yeah, and uh, you won't see them pre-owned, which is nice. Yeah, you would you would assume that like why would somebody if you have like a legitimate experience tying yourself to that watch, why would you sell it? Right. You know because now it's not like. Well, this thing's worth so much because it's only nineteen. It's like, well, like the watch is is worth right. what the 80, experience. Yeah, seventy percent of it was the experience. I think that the watch, those watches, <laughs> it, it actually, it, those were probably going to be worth well less than retail on the resale because the experience is worth where all the value right. is. Seventy. No, I would say like a good portion. Seventy percent right. is probably. I mean, who knows? Then maybe there's guys willing to overpay for or pay over retail for those watches just, just to buy them, but I doubt it. To be the first one. So rumors, uh, Rolex price increase coming, imminent. It already happened in Asia. It was like 4% in Asia. So I assume it's going to be happening in the U.S. Um, Go run and get all your stainless steel Rolex now before they sell out. Yeah, yeah. Because those are they're available now. Yeah. Go get them. <laughs> so good news is price increase on the watches you can't get anyways. Right. So, so. 
It's a win-win situation yeah, or lose-lose. Watch us on Thursdays from now on. Yeah, Thursday nights. Are we doing 6? 6 p.m.? 6 p.m. Thursday nights live, 6 p.m. Uh, subscribe. Check us out on uh, on YouTube, Instagram, MySpace, Grubhub, uh, LinkedIn. Um, uh, 